YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're here in Irwin Education Center at the Irwin Education Center. I'm gonna do a little zoo tour. This is a uh, this is something I put together before I started YouTube. Um, it's uh, an Australia-based, uh, obviously from the name, uh, named it after Steve Irwin, my personal hero. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get here into Ted's Cam. And we'll start over here at the front. Uh, this is before the Australian D's DLC. Uh, so there won't be really any, there won't be any of those animals in here. Uh, I think it may have been after the South American DLC. I'm not really too sure. I can't remember. Like I said, it's been a while. But uh, come here and we get straight into the, uh, the welcome sign. Uh, we got some music speakers kind of set the mood a little bit but once we come in first things you'll see is we have the Gimsbach on the right here uh, originally this zoo is going to be based around like just t entirely indoors but I figure what the heck let's go ahead and throw some of these uh, other animals these are pretty much what I did was I used some animals that I had uh, never really used before so Gimsbach is one of them uh, I really wanted to make it to where it would be kind of hard to see the animals and give them a lot of privacy but of course you can see from this angle and there's a uh, viewing area over there as well. Uh, they're actually stressed out a lot so that's why I made sure to try to cover up as much as I could with these plants. But of course we got the uh, custom walls here. A very modern look with the custom uh, education boards. Once again modern, the, the modern look to it. And on the uh, left here we have the massive uh, flamingo area. Uh, the water pretty much encompasses the entire thing so there's like a little bit of island here uh, with my okay I guess not so great custom uh, shelter area but I think from a distance it looks pretty good but uh, once again we got the uh, custom walls on this side and the custom uh, education educations uh, boards and we come over here in this area right here was uh, actually an idea my uh, wife gave to me is to make a little bit of a uh, art installation uh, so these are just in-game pieces to make it look like a little bit of a some art that was donated to the zoo. I'm, uh, got our uh, staff facilities over here. This is the staff facilities that pretty much take care of the, uh, primarily take care of the, uh, the Gimsbach. But like I said before, we also have another area over here where we can look into the habitat and check out the Gimsbach. So we'll go ahead and, uh, move on over to the, uh, the main attraction, shall we say. Uh, this has got, I think, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, five habitat animals and a crap load of exhibit animals. I believe it might have been uh, every exhibit animal that was available in the game at the time. Excuse me. So, uh, yeah, and then back here is all staff facilities. We'll go ahead and uh, take a look. This call connects here, and once you get here, it connects all the way around the building. And then also over to the... Uh, staff facilities for the uh, flamingos wow. we'll go ahead and uh, head up inside take a good look so here we go we got the Irwin Education Center got a in memory of Steve Irwin here in 1906-2006 you walk in the first thing we'll come to is a uh, information stands and uh, a gift shop and we'll come in here in just a second these are all the exhibits but uh, one of the things I wanted to point out is the uh, the uh, education points here on each corner of the building uh, this is all about the uh, Indian culture in India and pretty much what I did was I just used uh, all the different uh, scenery pieces for the Indian theme and just kind of shoved them in here uh, not really uh, placed in a specific uh, area or anything I just kind of threw some stuff in there try my best to make it look good and use some of the uh, scenery building pieces from that theme as well and uh, come on the other side and we have the African culture once again the same concept uh, we'll take a good look at it at night i am uh, got these uh, custom lights here 
Same with here, and these custom lights as well. Just like three or four pieces put together to make that. As you can see, I spent a lot of time making sure that uh, I put some uh, interesting trim on the walls. Uh, one thing I wish I would have done a little bit differently is the the glare on the ceiling compared to the glare on the ground. It kind of clashes a little bit, so when we do uh, some of this, when I show you around at night, there's like a lot of light glare in here. Uh, we have our restrooms on this side. And we have an ATM here. Come around, we got some uh, food shops as well. Got a little menu that I made. It's not the greatest, but I wanted to give it a shot trying to make something myself. Here we got the, uh, I just called it Arctic culture. I guess maybe you can call it, uh, you know, Norwegian culture or, or, or something. Not really too sure how you'd put it. Of course, we'll have to pretend like these uh, lights are fake because obviously this would burn the place down. And on the last side here, we have the Asian culture. So like I said, just kind of throwing some things in there to make it uh, resemble an education point. I would say you have to probably kind of uh, imply the fact that maybe there's a, uh, a speaker of some sort or like an education speaker that talks to you about... Uh, what all this stuff means but uh, we're gonna go ahead and go to the beginning and we're gonna go ahead and hop into uh, the exhibit area here Got a little bit of a custom floor going on With some uh, art pieces on the wall plenty of uh, plenty of uh, planters along with uh, all these uh, ambient speakers yeah. Got a uh, Amazon giant centipedes, uh, the snakes, lizards, snails. I think I kind of themed it. I try to do my best to uh, put the animals in certain areas to kind of give it a, a little bit of a theme. So I think we have all the snakes on this side. But after the staff area, there's really nothing in here. I was going to put a uh, keeper set in here, but it wouldn't necessarily fit the way I wanted it to. So we just left it out. We got a uh, bow constrictors, yellow anacondas, perfect view. And we have the uh, red eye tree frog. So yeah, this was uh, after the South American pack. So after South America pack, before the Australian pack. I've uh, got the Goliath frogs. Some more of these uh, foliage uh, installations here. On the side, we got the rattlesnake. And we got some spiders, tarantulas. We got the eastern brown snake. We got like the bird eaters. Uh, we got the iguanas, gila monsters, and the scorpions. Oh, yeah, and I got these. Uh, interesting custom lights here these were not the easiest thing to build seeing as the fact that I had to kind of work with my camera facing up like this it was very difficult but uh, now that we've seen this we'll go back to the uh, front and we'll work our way around to the let's say we'll go we'll go right and have a look at the uh, Komodo dragons so this is a uh, shared so we got the Komodo dragons on this side and then we got the Chinese penguins on this side. You come down this, the ramp here. And this is what I was talking about. So everything is uh, indoors. We have uh, all indoor uh, or habitats. Let's come over here is the Komodo dragons. They're in there somewhere. Not sure where they're at, but uh, they're in there somewhere. Uh, they do not have outdoor areas. But uh, yeah, we got the Komodo dragons. We'll go inside. There's one right there. Not sure where the other one's at. I thought I had two of them in here, but I might not. Hmm. Honestly, I don't remember. These signs right here, I believe, are the only uh, blueprints I used in the whole build. 
uh, blue prints aren't mine anyway. And these are made by the awesome Timmy Oops. Uh, incredible. And one of the one of my favorite things about these is uh, I've used them before, but they're customizable, I guess you could say. So you can keep this section here, remove this piece, and remove these pieces, and replace them with something else. So, for example, in my South American uh, Zoo Littles Zoo, uh, I replace this with something else, and then I replace these with bamboo sticks, and it kind of fit the theme of what the uh, zoo is all about. Uh, we have our donation bins here with these uh, neat little uh, realistic uh, style uh, counters and cabinets so you can open it up and take all the money out that people have donated. And then I made this little uh, picture here. <coughs> Excuse me. Also, you know, if you see anything in the zoo that you would like to take or that you would like to use yourself, instead of making individual blueprints of things, you know, uh, just a reminder that this is currently on the workshop. It's been on the workshop for a while. And uh, you're more than welcome to, to hop into it and tear it apart and take what you like. And here we got the uh, Chinese pangolin habitat. Uh, once again, all indoors. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look inside. <coughs> Excuse me. So we got the little water feature here with the bridge that goes over. Apparently we can't. And up here on the top we have where they sleep. And he is digging. I believe that these guys are actually pretty happy with their habitat as in uh, space wise. Yeah, Komodo dragons are not. But yeah, so you'll see this building and the interior of it is pretty much the same as all the other sides. Uh, I did that on purpose, you know, I did the whole uh, duplicate and uh, moved to the other side. Uh, we'll go ahead and do the crocodiles last. <coughs> My throat is becoming all scratchy. So here we got the Nile monitor. Oh, by the way, you know, the other side was all about the uh, Asian animals. This over here is the African animals. So that's why the lizards aren't together, if, in case you were wondering, but uh, we got our Nile monitor habitat. We'll go inside, take a look. Uh, now monitors love their uh, their water, so we gave them a large uh, area of water, along with this little bitty uh, sort of like an island where they can swim, and then they can also walk on top of this, along with the keepers. The keepers can also walk on top of that. And apparently we can't, so. But yeah, uh, most uh, indoor lighting you do with habitats, you always use red lighting, but instead of this time I used actual lighting, I just kind of dimmed it a little bit because uh, you want to be able to see, uh, especially at night. Uh, like I said, nothing it's nothing spectacular, but I just wanted to uh, try my hand at uh, building something, uh, building a zoo that was almost entirely indoors. And uh, I have plans to do that again soon, but this time there will be no outside uh no outside habitats at all, like sort of like this with the Gimbs Bach and the flamingos. Uh, we'll come over to the other side and we have our aardvark. With a neat little uh, indoor area with some tunnels. And a neat little cave over here in the, on the, in the corner. Uh, aardvarks, from my understanding, love to dig and tunnel. So, And yes, they actually use it. All right, and the last thing we're going to look at is we're going to go and look at the crocodiles. Now this whole side is just for the crocodiles. And it is very different from the rest of them because uh, I themed the inside of it with the logs and stuff to give it that more of a old uh, wood, woodland feel. But uh, this is a great way to see the crocodiles up close. Should be two, there it is. I'm gonna say we got custom framing. Uh, and I think they're called trusses and beams at the top. And then of course more of a Timmy Ops, or Timmy Oops, sorry. Timmy Oops is a uh, awesome uh, animal panels. This right here. 
this work with these tiny little pieces to make the shape of the animals is incredible and if I'm not mistaken this person has done this with every single animal available in the game although I'm not sure about some of the newer animals but I'm sure that this uh, person will get to it eventually yeah, that's basically the inside and uh, we have our do have our staff sections out the back here when you come down and this is behind everything and this is all the staff facilities you need so staff rooms keepers huts and uh, all that stuff I don't believe I added a vet or anything. I'm pretty sure I did, but I'm not sure where. But we do have all our habitat gates out in the back. Oh, I believe it's back here. So we got those over there for those two animals. And then we got this area over here. Just quarantine. And trade center, workshops, research centers, vets. And then over here is for these uh, this side. And then, of course, uh, like I said before, this all goes back right back into the building. That's uh that's pretty much covers it. It's a it's a short tour, I know, but the zoo's been out for a while. Uh, it did make a brief appearance on Paulsley's channel and one of his uh in one of his uh community showcases. Here's a little bit of the overview. You can see I covers the entire area with trees to make sure to block out any of the sites. Now we'll get a better look over here. We got the bridges. Uh, when you're doing habitats like this that are completely surrounded by water, I know that some people have been able to get the keepers to walk through very shallow water, but of course this isn't shallow, so make sure to build bridges that the uh, keepers can walk across. Same with over here where they can come in and, uh, from the gate. The piece count on this is atrocious. This is the interior of the uh, flamingo house, or flamingo hut. Let me get a better look at the Gims box. Uh, especially with this zoo, I really wanted a lot of natural walls and natural boundaries for the habitats. <coughs> uh, I think it looks better than just having concrete walls in the back or something. But that's the uh, that's the overview. So pretty much what I did was built one, copied it over. On this side, changed up the interior a little bit, and then on this side, I uh, did the same, but of course made it smaller. Uh, we have some uh, solar panels here that I placed in uh, several locations. I apologize for the inconvenience, but I do not remember who made these, and for some odd reason, I didn't write it down, but I may have wrote it down within the uh, description on the Steam Workshop. So Definitely check that out if you want to take a look at those items. We'll go ahead and take a quick look at night. I believe it's well lit. Uh, habitats have a uh, very minimal lighting. Of course, we got our art installations over here that are well lit. And in the inside, see, I feel like there's too much glare in some spaces. I guess it's not as bad as I remember. They may have fixed the lighting in a in a in a recent update or something, and haven't just haven't been in the zoo uh, since then. But as you can see, I feel like there's adequate lighting inside the habitat. You can't; it's not complete, uh, extremely bright, but it's bright enough to be able to see. And also, uh, when I finally realized that the lighting inside of the exhibits was actually customizable, uh, I hadn't realized it for the longest time. So I made sure to change it, and I think the uh, red makes it seem very interesting. It gives it a, a totally different feel. Sorry about uh, trying to work this uh, camera. lighting is awesome. I think the lighting really brings the whole entire thing together. Well, that's pretty much it, folks. That is uh, Irwin Education Center. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, it is currently on the workshop, so feel free to check it out. And If you want to take some bits and pieces from it that you want to use in your own zoos, uh, I'm completely okay with that. I have no problem with it whatsoever. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. 
I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, there will be more tours coming uh, very soon. We have uh, three, three more tours that I'm going to do of uh, sandbox zoos that I did before I started YouTube. Uh, that will be Merlin's Kingdom, which Merlin's Kingdom was uh, showcased on Zoo Fluitor's channel in a full-on zoo tour. Uh, we have Eden Zoological Preserve, which at one point made an appearance on Paul's Lee's Community Showcase as well. We have Sydney Zoo, and Sydney Zoo was also showcased on Paul's Lee's channel in a full-on zoo tour, if you want to go check that out. And I think that's pretty much it. I have uh, two, two projects that I had abandoned a long time ago. Uh, my thoughts on those was maybe to show them off on the channel. Uh, maybe we can continue those projects in a later date, or... I can uh, upload them to the workshop and maybe other people can uh, have a go at it and see what they can come up with. Uh, I just stopped because after getting so far into the builds, I just lost my creative uh, drive for them and I couldn't think of what to do next. So I just abandoned them and I uh, moved on with other projects. So, But uh, thank you guys for uh, stopping by and checking out this video. Uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already and leave a comment and a like. Uh, it really goes a long way in helping me grow this channel. And also, uh, I do have a Discord. If you want to come over and join that, we have a lot of fun there. And you're more than welcome to come. And if you don't want to be active, lurking is perfectly fine with me. And also, it gives you a good place to, uh, if you're also a content creator, to promote your work. So, you you know, on, this, on my Discord channel, you are not required to be active to promote uh, your content. So, come on over and uh, have some fun with us. Uh, thank you for clicking on the video. Uh, take care out there, and I will see you in the next one.